We suggest you pause this video often. It helps to study the slides. Next, we will discuss the ovarian and uterine cycles within the menstrual cycle. There is also the somewhat confusing terminologies of two cycles within the menstrual cycle. This refers to the ovarian cycle and the uterine cycle. We can't call them subcycles because they occur simultaneously. The uterus must obey the ovaries. Therefore, what is happening in the ovarian cycle with the recruitment and growth of follicles directly affects the uterine cycle. Both the ovarian cycle and the uterine cycle are part of the menstrual cycle. We have been discussing the ovarian part of the cycle. Now we will discuss the uterine part of the cycle. The uterine cycle has three phases, menstruation, proliferative, and secretory. Menstruation usually lasts three to seven days or an average of five days during a 28-day cycle. Painful cramping in the abdomen, back, and upper thighs is common during the first few days of menstruation. Severe uterine pain, known as dysmenorrhea, is common in younger women and especially adolescents. And the woman who charts her cycle will know exactly when to take non-steroidal anti-inflammatories like ibuprofen a few days before her period to help ease the pain. Premenstrual syndrome, or PMS, which includes symptoms of breast tenderness and irritability, generally decreases when menstruation occurs. The second phase of the uterine cycle is the proliferative phase. This corresponds to the follicular phase in the ovarian cycle after menses and up until ovulation. During this time, estrogen causes the endometrium, or lining of the uterus, to grow or proliferate. This results in a new lining of the endometrium in the uterus, which prepares the uterus for the implantation and growth of a new baby. Estrogen also stimulates crypts in the cervix to produce fertile cervical mucus, which we will discuss shortly. The third phase, or secretory phase, of the uterine cycle corresponds to the luteal phase of the ovarian cycle. Remember, the luteal phase begins after ovulation. Once the egg leaves the follicle, there is an indentation remaining in the ovary called the corpus luteum that produces progesterone. Progesterone acts on the uterine structures in several ways. First, it activates the pockets of Shaw, which dry up the cervical mucus. Progesterone also increases blood flow and uterine secretions and reduces the contractibility of the uterine vessels thereby making the endometrium receptive to implantation of the new human life known as the embryo, or more precisely at this time, the blastocyst. Both a new life and new person are created upon conception, which occurs upon the fertilization of the ovum by the sperm. Conception takes place in the outer third of the fallopian tube near the ovary, and the developing baby can be up to 10 days old by the time he or she reaches the uterus to implant. This tiny human is completely unique. Things like eye color, height, and some personality traits are already programmed in the DNA. The only thing needed for this person to reach his or her full potential is a place to grow and develop. If, on the other hand, there has been no conception, then a new cycle begins with menses as the uterus sheds its lining in anticipation of preparing anew for conception in the next cycle. In 1965, the ACOG, or the American Congress of Obstetricians and Gynecologists, changed the definition of conception to implantation of a fertilized ovum. Again in 1972, ACOG changed another definition, changed the definition of conception to the implantation of the blastocyst. The ACOG changes in the definition of conception were made to justify the destruction of embryos prior to implantation, which does not occur until the embryo is 6 to 12 days old. The Catholic Church has never accepted these changes of definition. So here's a little quiz to see if you're retaining the information. True or false? Regular bleeding is a sign of health. The answer is false. Ovulation is a sign of health. A woman can actually bleed very regularly, but if she is not ovulating, there is an underlying medical reason. Number two, a woman will only feel dry in the luteal phase. 
The answer is false. A woman might feel moist, damp, or dry, but she should not feel slippery or wet during the luteal phase. If she does, she has not ovulated yet. Number three, a woman's luteal phase remains fairly constant throughout her life. The answer is true. Even after pregnancy, a woman's luteal phase should stay relatively constant, plus or minus one to two days.